In this video, I want to talk a little bit about how to create a requirements document in a way that's compatible with behavior-driven design, also known as given when then. First, I want to put some context around this. This is the manifesto for agile software development, and you see several contributors down here at the bottom. One who I want to point out is Ward Cunningham, a gentleman who I admire in our field of information technology. He is often credited as the inventor of the wiki, the person who coined the term technical debt, something that's a very interesting topic, and he's one of the people who signed off on this manifesto for agile software development. So, uh, I, when I read this, I almost want to read the last line first because I think it's important to keep that in context. While there is value in the items on the right, we value the items on the left more. So the Agile manifesto, manifesto doesn't say, don't follow a plan. It just says, we'd rather respond to change than follow a plan if given that decision. So what's the Agile manifesto? We prefer individuals and interaction over processes and tools. So get up and have a conversation. Uh, don't worry about this document hasn't been put in the correct repository, so on and so forth. You see this a lot in the workplaces that we have now where you have kind of an open office environment and it's common to ask people to help you out when you get stuck on something. Working software over comprehensive documentation. I can say in my career many times I've dealt with vendor software and I get a, a binder with 200 pages and I kind of want to say, yeah, that's great, but here's all I want to do. That looks very complicated. I often say, think of Shazam's approach. You open up Shazam, press anywhere, it tells you what song's playing. Very easy. You don't have to go through a login, through a main menu. It's just right there. Very helpful. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation. So we want to make sure that the customer understands the processes that we're using and has bought into that. And then responding to change over following a plan. That can work very much in our favor because, number one, we understand the change is going to happen. Number two, we can tell our customers that we understand change is going to happen and therefore feel free to give us something that's only 80% complete in design. We'll take it from there with the knowledge that we're going to develop it, we're going to show it to you. You might like it, you might not. If you don't like it, we might have some rework. We understand that. So with that, and especially with the working software over comprehensive documentation, I'll show you a very simple requirements document for plant places or plant places mobile. So what we'll typically do is say as a blank, and then the analyst will fill out what that blank is. I want to be able to do something and get a certain result. So as a user, I want to be able to search for plants by any part of the name, genus, species, or cultivar name, uh, so that I can find plants that match my search criteria. So very, a very simple English-like uh, instruction of, as a user, which is a noun, I want to be able to, so some kind of verb, and then I will get some kind of output from that verb. A quick note on dependencies and a quick note on assumptions. And now comes the important part. I think you'd probably agree with me that this line that I've written up above can be understood by someone who writes software as well as somebody who doesn't write software. And that's the whole idea. We all sit together. We all come up with this scenario. Additionally, once we've come up with the scenario, we elaborate it into a series of examples and given when then syntax. We do this in an English-like language. I mean, we do it in English, frankly. And the reason is, it's you, uh, the, the reason we do it in this format, not necessarily in English, but in this format, is we're using a ubiquitous language, a language that a business analyst can understand, a project manager, a quality analyst, and a developer. All four, and even more, have input into these examples. And again, I mean, English or whatever your native language is, it's just written in a way that's not programming. It's written in a way that sentences that somebody would speak so we can all understand it. Why is that so important? Well, my primary career is in software development, and I will speak firsthand and say a lot of times software developers like me tend to only think happy path. We don't tend to think of edge cases. But if you get some diverse opinions in the room, a business analyst, a quality analyst, a project manager, and a developer, you're likely to come across many scenarios 
which one person alone, regardless of that person's role, developer or business analyst or whatever, uh, more than just what one person would think of on his own or on her own. So we all sit down and we come up with these examples. Given a feed of plant data is available, when I search for Redbud, then I should receive at least one result with these attributes. attributes. Circus canadensis eastern redbud. And there's our happy path. Okay, so given a feed of plant data is available when I search for Quercus, then I should receive at least one result with Quercus rober and one with Quercus alba. So here a little more complicated than the first one where we have multiple results. Given a feed of plant data is available when I search for some kind of garbage, then I should receive zero results or an empty list. So this is an edge case. This is where the user has searched for something a little bit funny. We could definitely add more cases to this. We could say, given a feed of plant data is not available, what do we do then? So let's think about when our dependencies start dropping off. How does our program handle it? Before long, we could very easily come up with many, many examples from this one simple scenario. Now, why do we put them in given when then syntax? Because that's very easy to translate into a behavior de driven design unit test. So we will take a look at this in more depth in a few videos that are upcoming. But what we have here is a test method with the annotated at test annotation. And then we have the method that we're testing and the behavior that we're testing for verify at least one red bud. You see that matches very closely to that given when then that we just saw. And now we have a method here given plant data are available when I search for redbud then verify at least one Circus canadensis. So right now we're looking at source code and if you're not a programmer you might say gosh I don't understand this. That's okay. You can at least see that given plant data are available maps very closely to given a feed of plant data is available. So the reason why we do given when then elaborated as examples is to make sure that everybody who's a stakeholder has some input into the test that we're eventually going to write and also make sure that our unit tests are covering more than just happy path but they're covering many other scenarios as well. So that is a behavior driven design requirements document. You see a little sign off here, uh, some kind of revision history, a two pager, fits very well with the concept of the Agile Software Manifesto and also fits well with our concept of behavior driven design unit tests. So I'm curious what experience you've had with these or what ways you found that work. If you found, find ways that work better, put it in the comments. I'd love to know. Thank you.